All week long, we've been talking about constituents, noun phrases, verb phrases, prepositional phrases, and we have used those constituents to build trees, constituent parsing trees. In these next two videos, we will look at a different way to build trees called dependency parsing. What, again, what have we been doing so far? We've been making trees based on constituents. So for example, we have here that cold empty sky was full of fire and light. And our main organizational units are constituents. Sentence, verbal phrase, noun phrase, um, prepositional phrase, and so forth. Why do we care about constituents? Because they are a way for us to get information from the sentence. Let's say we have the sentence, Jane eats pizza. And we know it has a noun phrase and a verbal phrase as, it's, uh, as the notes most directly connected to sentence. So if we read the yield of VP, like the, word, like the terminals connected to VP, they would be eats pizza. Who performs the action in VP? The sister note of VP, in this case, the MP, which contains the terminal Jane. So who performs the action in the VP? The sister note, Jane. So who eats pizza? Jane. This provides us with an easy way to extract information. How about the other way around? If we have this terminal, Jane, uh, contained in this end, uh, noun phrase. What is Jane doing? We would look at the sister note of NP, which is VP. Jane is eats pizza, eating pizza. So what does Jane do? Eats pizza. We can take this down uh, to every level. For example, for the verb eats, what is um, who is the action V eats being performed on? Who are we performing eats on? The sister node of V, NP, pizza. So who has the action eats performed to it? Pizza. Likewise, the, note, the NP node and the V node have uh, the relation, uh, same relationship the other way around. For this NP, pizza, who, what action is being performed on the NP? Its sister node. V, eats. So what is the action that's being performed on a pizza? Eats. Someone's eating it. So using the constituents, we can intuit the relationships between words. For example, the relationship between an NP and a VP in a sentence is that of subject to the verbal phrase. So this note, an NP, which is a sister of a VP, is the subject of the sentence, in this case, Jane. How about a noun phrase that is the sister of a V? This is the direct object of the sentence. It's pizza. So from this structural configuration, we can extract this information. But I'll, I'll be the first one to admit it's kind of roundabout. You have to build a lot of structure just to get this information. How about if we build a more direct tree, one that just tells us the dependency relations, relationships, which we're going to call relations. Maybe we could have the sentence, Jane eats pizza, and we could connect the word eats with Jane using a connection called subject. And we could connect the word eats with pizza using a connection called direct object. So we would have eats, and out of eats goes one arc that is directed towards chain and that tells you that it's the subject. Then out of eats goes another arc that goes onto pizza and tells you it's the direct object. We're going to call this kind of uh, graph, this kind of parsing, dependency parsing. Here are some examples of exactly the same sentence with several styles of drawing these dependency parsings. Here's also the websites where you can go and type sentences in English and a couple of other languages. As you can see, they start the graph starts from the verb eats. 
which is labeled differently in different systems. This one was the verb uh, that is in third person, and this one is just labeled verb. But both graphs start from eat and then tell you, then head in an arc towards the direct object, which is a pizza. And this one then draws an arc out onto Jane, which is the subject. Likewise here, this one uh, has an arc leaving eat, eats and landing at Jane labeled subject. And it has another arc leaving eats and landing in pizza and it's labeled object. So this would be a more straightforward way to make our parsing because it directly tells you what's the relationship between words. Who did eats? The subject, Jane's. What, is, uh, what are we eating? The direct object, pizza. Dependency parses have roots. First of all, they have several components. Uh, the first one is a root, which is like the part where the graph starts. So if we have the sentence, I prefer the morning flight through Denver, in English, we assign the, the root to the verb, because this will be the unit from which all of the other relationships will be described. So prefer is the root. And by the way, this parse here is also shown here in a more in a simplified way, which just shows you the, um, um, the words entailed in each of the relationships. So there's a relationship that goes from prefer to I, a relationship that goes from prefer to flight, but the root of the graph is here on the word prefer. So every dependency parse is gonna start with a root, and in English it's usually the verb, in English and many languages. After you've set up the root, you will need to draw arcs that connect a head word with its dependent word. So for example, the word prefer would be the head of the, uh, of, the ver of the word I. This arc has a label so that the relationship between prefer and I is the relationship of subject. This is the label of this arc. Likewise, there's a relationship between prefer and flight. And the relationship between these two words is that of direct object. So this is the head of the arc. This is, the word prefer is the head of the arc. Then the word flight is the dependent of that arc. And the label of the arc is direct object. And as you can see, there's other connections that describe words. For example, the word flight is the head of an arc that goes to the dependent the, and the relationship between the words is that of determiner. So the word the is the determiner of flight. This is another example. Uh, we looked at the sentence before. Uh, Vinken will join the board as a non-executive director on November 29. You can see again that the root is set up on the verb and you have relationships like auxiliary verb, subject of a sentence, direct object of a sentence, mm -hmm, ad, uh, adjectival modifier, for example. There's one here that's called closely related so join director are defined as closely related and i've put here the definition if you want to read more there's many types of arcs um, these are just a few examples and the, in it, the italics has the head of the arc and the bold is the dependent so united is the subject of canceled in united canceled the flight because obviously United is the one that did the canceling. So this would be the head, and it would draw an arc that goes to the dependent, United, and the relationship between them is that of subject. You also have direct objects, like uh, we booked her the first flight to Miami, because what did you book? The flight. There's indirect object, which is the one who benefits from an action. We booked her the flight. Who did we book it for? We have nominal modifiers, morning flight, adjectival modifiers, cheapest 
flight. Uh, we have determiners, the flight. We have, uh, for example, conjunctions, um, and drove, and so forth. I'll tell you about the case um, label in the next video. So there's many relationships that we could use. How do we know if these parsers are working? Let's say we uh, have a dependency parser on our computer, and it produces some prediction of what the parsing should be. The way we evaluate it is by counting the labeled attachment score. You could calculate the label attachment score, which is the percentage of words that have the correct head and label in the arc that goes to them. The unlabeled attachment score is similar, but you are only counting that when you have a word, it's linked to the correct head. It doesn't care about the label. We're going to use the more complex labeled attachment score measurement, which to, uh, asks for the percentage of words where you have the word and then the arc comes from the right head and also has the right label. So for example, it comes, if you have direct object, it comes from the verb and has the label direct object and lands on you. Uh, this, is a, this is an example for you to think about a little bit. I have here the definitions of uh, labeled uh, assignments ooh, score. Yes, label attachment score and uh, unlabeled attachment score. So which of these are true or false? If this is the prediction that the parser gave you, and this is the parse that you were supposed to get, and again, the labeled attachment score is having the correct head and label for the arc that lands onto you. And the unlabeled attachment score is just having the correct head pointing towards you. Are these statements true or false? So pause the video, take a minute to try to decide whether these statements are true or false for this prediction from a, from a um, hypothetical parser and this actual gold labeled parse. And we'll look at the results after you come back. Please pause the video. This would be it. So the unlabeled attachment score is 100% because here um, the word hugged should be pointing towards Snoopy. So the head of Snoopy should be hugged because this is the most direct relationship possible. Um, hugged should be the root, uh, and it should go on to the root. Uh, Woodstock should uh, have an arc that has hugged as the head, because these two are mo the most closely related ones. And punctuation also gets a label, and it's related to the verb. So all of these connections are okay as long as we count them unlabeled. So all of the heads are correct. However, there's one label here that's wrong. The relationship between hugged and Woodstock has the correct arc, but the label should be direct object because who did I hug? Woodstock. It is not an adverbial modifier. And so the unlabeled score, I'm sorry, the labeled score would be 75% because it is correct in one, two, three cases, but not in this one. So again, we uh, try to figure out how many words have the correct head pointing towards them. This one should, uh, had a, should have a verb pointing towards it, and it does. And whether the relationship is labeled correctly. It is the subject of the verb. As a summary of what we have so far, we now have two types of parsing, constituency parsing and dependency parsing. In constitu constituency parsing, which is what we have been doing all week, the words are connected according to what constituents they belong to. Maybe they belong to a noun phrase, maybe to a verb phrase. In dependency parsing, words are connected by their syntactic relationships. So a verb is connected to its subject. A verb is connected to its direct object and so forth. 
Um, there are metrics that we can use to evaluate whether they're working or not, such as the label attachment score. In the next video, we'll look at how we can make a dependency parser.